Marriage should be the most awesome thing that happens to a person, at least for most people it is, you know. Great awesome experience that you all love and memories that you cherish for the rest of your life. But depending on where you come from, some marriage rituals and traditions will seem bizarre if you're not a member of the community. And Africa is known for its diversity and so we're going to look at the top 10 bizarre marriage traditions coming out of Africa. So if you've seen my other video on marriages in Africa, then you might have a feel of what is coming, but trust me, what I have coming in this video is nothing like what we talked about in the previous ones. And I assure you, those rituals we're going to talk about, they are crazy and you definitely want to see them. So let's get started. My name is Michael Lokman. It's great to have you on the Savix Africa YouTube channel. So on this channel, we talk about African stories, cultures, traditions, and people. And, and if it's the first time on the channel, do well to click on the subscribe button and click on the bell so you're notified every time we make new content. And if you're a regular, welcome back. So great to have you back. I love you guys and I appreciate every moment you spend watching our videos. That's a lot of support you're giving us. So back to the video of the day and we're starting from number 10, wife wrestling. If you're taken aback by what this might mean, it means exactly what you heard. So the groom is going to fight the bride, yeah, and let's hope the groom wins because the marriage will probably be over before it starts. So a man fights the woman and then they get married shortly afterwards. And you can find them among the Karamajong tribe in Uganda and the Syrian summer tribes in Ethiopia. Just how crazy is that? And number 9, why fattening? You find these among the Ibibio tribes in Calabar, Nigeria and in some tribes in Mauritania. So the practice is to get the bride to be into a fattening room and have them well fed for a period of time until she is fleshy and you know, big enough because in such cultures, they appreciate women who are fleshy and do not appreciate women who are skinny. So the fleshier woman is the more acceptable and attractive her groom is going to find her. And within the period of fattening, the woman is also groomed in the practice of being a good wife. And number eight, proof of groom's sexual prowess. And yeah, you heard what you heard. So in this culture, they have to be sure that a man can sexually satisfy a woman before he can get married to her, right? And this is how it works. In the Bayankole tribe of Uganda, a groom presents himself to a bride's family and the bride's aunt will have to have sex with him. And if she's satisfied with his sexual prowess and feels that he has all it takes to satisfy a woman and her niece, then uh, she can pass the man down to the lady who would eventually get married to him. But then the lady who performs this role also has to ensure that her niece is a virgin because she has to check. And in some cultures, she has to become a mentor to the niece and teach her all she has to be. And would even have to inspect the first night duties just to be sure that everything goes just well. Number seven, bride kidnap. I've come to realize that this is quite a common practice in different parts of Africa and even in some other cultures outside of Africa, but you're gonna find this among the Frafra Fra tribe of Ghana and the Himba tribe of Namibia. And the way it's practiced is kind of different from place to place because in the Frafra Fra tribe, when they kidnap a lady, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but if you're Ghanaian, please correct me and please forgive me, Frafra Fra tribe. So when they kidnap a bride, they take her home and they lock her up and then they even get people to guard her and make sure she does not escape. And only then can they go back to the bride's father and ask for her hand in marriage. If he accepts, then the marriage right will go on. But if he says no, then the daughter will have to return home. But in the Himba tribe of Namibia, it isn't the father who has to accept, it's the lady. So when the lady is kidnapped, she's presented with new clothes, new jewelries and all the beautiful things that would make her want to stay and if she accepts the new clothes then 
the groom's family can go on and begin negotiations for the married rights. Hmm, interesting. Moving on to number six, the most expensive bride price in the world. And you're going to find this practice among the newer people of Southern Sudan. So once a groom identifies a prospective bride, he has to raise and pay between 20 and 40 cattle in bride price. Like, how rich are those people? So I'm not quite sure you understand how expensive that is. So a typical cattle in the US will cost between 2,000 and 5,000 US dollars, right? And okay, so let's take a median. Let's assume we're getting a cattle for $3,000. Now multiply that by 40 and find out exactly how much these people spend getting married. These guys are rich. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm literally going bonkers right now because I didn't do this arithmetic before I started showing this video but these people spend upwards of 120,000 US dollars in bride price alone just to get married. How pricey are those ladies? Jeez. Anyways, that's the culture and every man has to do this to get married, right? But then there's a caveat to this. So, if a man has paid between 20 and 40 cattle to get married to a lady, she's expected to have at least two children. So in a case where a lady does not have two children, the marriage right is not complete. So it's only at the birth of a third child that the marriage is considered complete. If a lady turns out to be barren or has just one child, then the groom has a right to go request that he reimburse all his cattle and he divorces the lady immediately. Yeah, so that's very gangster, right? That is very gangster. That's as gangster as it gets. You give me my children or I take my cat back. You understand, right? <laughs> yeah. And what's even more interesting, in a case where this lady is not able to have at least two children and the family is unable to reimburse all the 40 cattle that was paid to them. So this groom is going to wait for a lady from the bride's family to get married. And then they will just go and take all the bride price straight from the sauce and you know good luck to the lady she she now has to have her own children or else her family will have to pay again <laughs> moving on number five spit on the bride mm. so in the maasai tribes of kenya and tanzania they have a very interesting marriage rights so when a groom and his family arrives at the bride's place they are given a bowl of fresh blood to drink yeah, but I mean, that would seem okay if you were Maasai because that is a, a meal that a Maasai would have on a very good day. You know, fresh cattle blood. Mm. Yeah, I know what you're thinking, but let's not go there. So they've had a fresh cattle blood and the lady is ready to join her husband's people. Now, there are three interesting things that other persons would find very bizarre and first would be the father has to spit on the bride yeah so hey daughter come 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 for my blessing and then he spits in the face on her breasts and then says bye bye now the lady has to do this dance with with a stick and why she's doing the dance then the second bizarre thing happens because her husband's people the groom's people are expected to haul insults at her so they say mean things to her but it's a way of warning away bad luck and blessing the marriage you know so you understand how that works so you say something bad then something good happens right and after the dance then she walks away with her husband's people and then the last fun thing happens which is she doesn't get to look back because if a Maasai girl looks back to her people's home she will turn to stone why does that seem so familiar like why does that seem oh yeah that's a story from the bible only this time she isn't turning into a pillar of salt she's turning into stone yeah so i guess it's all good if you're in love with a maasai lady well good luck with the blood and i think that's all you have to contend with but yeah let's move on number four no smiles allowed imagine a wedding ceremony where people are not allowed to laugh or smile or be happy and the marriage rights were going to look you know very serious because among the Congolese people marriage was such a serious thing that people were not allowed to laugh or smile or crack jokes and and in fact the bride and the groom could be seen to be pissed off well maybe not pissed off you know maybe afraid you know whatever you want to call that but it isn't good so that's the culture man 
no smiles allowed just stay mean through the ceremony and it doesn't matter if you're getting married uh, you know traditionally or you're doing the uh, church uh, wedding and all that so this culture has permitted everything marriage among the Congolese people so no smiles allowed mm. okay all right yeah so let's move on number three the test of young manhood or shadow i don't know if i'm pronouncing that right but that is a culture of beating up a prospective groom among the fulani people of nigeria and i think all of west africa among the fulani tribe one of the rites of passage is to show that you can resist pain yeah and so there is usually a competition for brides not because it's a shortage of ladies but because that is just the culture and so there are two young men who are interested in one lady and they have to take turns to beat up each other with a whip or with a rod or with a cane whatever the case may be so the person who shows the greatest ability to resist the pain and wave it off as nothing i mean the person who doesn't even flinch at all when they are whipped by the cane would end up coming out on top and would become the groom yeah so i think if i had just that culture to choose over everything else then where is that monastery i'm becoming a monk so it doesn't matter i could become maybe a buddhist monk you know right now oh whatever but nobody's whipping me for bride man well thank god i'm married <laughs> So that's the full learning culture and among them it's an honorable thing to do but for the rest of us the sing sing customs of new papua guinea i think a lot of africans may not even be aware of these beautiful set of human beings who live in new papua guinea who are so colorful and wear very beautiful makeup and you know when i saw uh, clips of people from new papua guinea i immediately thought of the wuda bay whom we shall not be talking about in this video for a very simple reason. So the Wudabe have a very extensive marriage rights which uh, did not quite make the list and I know you might be thinking of the wife stealing festivals and practice of the Wudabe people. Well, I wouldn't really be talking about that because wife stealing is not the primary way that the Wudabe people marry. It's something else they do on the side and something that we could talk about in another video but they won't quite be making it uh, in this list. Same with other similar practices like wife sharing, which is not exactly marriage. You know, someone's just burying someone else's wife for a short period after which the woman goes back to where uh, she's always been. But all that aside, let's get back to the people of New Papua Guinea. So they have something they call a same thing. And that actually is a carnival where they have all those colorful leaves and they do colorful singing and dancing and music and all of that and it's so fine and so beautiful and this has become a very important marriage rite among the people of New Papua Guinea and during those festivals then a groom could show off his skills and possibly seduce a bride you know that's awesome right yeah okay let's move on to number one and that would be the bull jumping ceremony of the Hama tribe of Ethiopia so we talked about this in our previous video on marriage the one I talked about earlier right and this is a rite of passage where a young man is required to jump over a bull to prove that he is man enough and ready to get into a marriage arrangement that I think is a very interesting culture and I think the least intimidating among all the shows of manlyhood maybe except uh, where you have to sleep with your wife's aunt <laughs> to prove your manliness but weeping and plucking whiskers off a lion hell no we're not doing that so there you have it so that's our list of top 10 bizarre marriage which was coming out of africa now tell me what do you think about those practices do you think they should still be practiced do you think some of them need to go do you come from any of these cultures? Are there deeper significance to some of those practices that this video has not shown forth? So let us know in the comment section. Let us talk about these practices. Tell me, what did you like about this video? What can we do better? What kind of content do you want us to produce more and know this? So if you ask me to talk about some stuff that was of some importance to you, I'll be willing to put in the work and to get that video delivered right to you yes so thank you all for watching and if you still haven't subscribed to the channel now would be a good time to click on the subscribe button 
click on the bell so you're notified every time we make new content it's been a real great pleasure having this conversation so i hope you all find the time to give us a like to share to leave comments in this video let's uh, keep the conversation going and thank you for watching see you in the next video that you're going to watch just after now and another after now because that could be your way of supporting the channel because the more videos you watch the better for us because the more videos you watch the easier it is for youtube to recommend them to other people and trust me when i say this if you can afford to be a patreon then at least leave a comment leave a like share this video that's still you supporting our channel but if you can afford to be a patreon we need your money please give it to us <laughs> all right thank you guys and see you next time Bye bye